Oh, it's Miguel Sam Possible. Miguel's my name. Back to another reaction video and welcome to my fifth reaction to by Chris Morris. So, two episodes left. Episode four was probably the darkest one so far. Can it get even darker? Probably. Let's find out. Jam five. Oh god. When surface from a four-day crash, blue bottle gobbed, and hear the children call you maggot mouth, and rise to find they've raped your guts, so fall you, Jesse. Those children are the court. They crown you king of cantaloupe, and gob you up a synapse bomb. So now, you hooting leather skate, not clocking you've been crammed to serenade the door of your ex-wife. Where pierced on glares of ice, you fold to weeping top. Oh. Then find you've wandered back to school and frit the squabs. And now, here comes a teacher with a copper. Then ah. welcome. Mm. Ooh, fuss, 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 fuss. Welcome. In chill. Okay. <laughs> I've said it before, I've said it again. Chris needs to donate his brain to science. It has to be a requirement. Right. How do I say your name again? Martin. Martin. Okay. Can I look at your tongue? Do you get cold fingertips? Mm. Yes. Sometimes. Are you I a just doctor? take your pulse. Okay, she is. I think. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. important for patients to relax fully before I start the treatment. Otherwise it can be a bit distressing. Oh god. down by your side. You might feel a little Oh god, Cash got a cavity bit. Oh the nails I use are between 9 and 14 inches long and half an inch thick. Can you move your head at all, Martin? I don't want to try. The nails must go at least 2 inches into the table. Otherwise, the patient will slide off. Oh, no. You might feel a little uncomfortable, Martin, because you're taking the weight of your body on the nails. And pushing down the wrist nails will take the weight off your ribs and head. I'm going to leave you. And come back in about half an hour. <laughs> I don't. Oh, man, I don't know why that sketch made me that uncomfortable. Very successful. Oh God! Never had a patient come back. We do have difficulty 
getting some of them to leave under their own steam. We just have to put them out the back. They've normally gone in the morning. Yeah. I don't know why that segment made me that uncomfortable. Fuck, dude. That was the worst. thing to be afraid of, to be fair. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't say a thing. It'll probably take me a day or two to recover my eyesight. <laughs> so could you pop back on Thursday? Can't you? Thursday morning, and we can book you a proper appointment. Right. Good. <laughs> what the fuck? Sarah, I've just blinded myself. Could you cancel the rest of my appointments? <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'll probably need someone to lead me out to my car. What the fuck? I just don't think we can stretch to 280,000. What was your maximum? 240. He is prepared to accept an offer. Of 240? Well, he'll take 250. There would have to be an arrangement. Arrangement? Yeah. What sort of arrangement? A sex arrangement. <laughs> He'd want sex in return for dropping the price. Twelve times before the exchange of contracts. Twelve times? No. It's our only chance. Oh my god. What the fuck? No, not really. It's a fantastic house. Wouldn't you mind me? Of course I'd mind, but I do think it's the only way you'll get the house. Except six times. Has she had any children? Have you had any children? One. Ask her if it caused any damage. <laughs> Did it cause much damage? Not really, no. <laughs> That's good. What the fuck? He would accept seven penetrations. Four oral sessions and one of bagpiping. Bagpiping. What does that mean? What's bagpiping? Yeah. It's where he puts himself in your armpit. Oh. Quite a good mouth, yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Mr. Lulch could do the oral sessions. Me? But well, I don't think Then that... yes, I'll do it. <laughs> Sure, you'd be all right with eight. I mean, even if I am sharing it, yeah. I think we need a bit more time. No, Mel, you might like okay. to come. Shall I give him a call? <laughs> Hope you don't have gag reports. Hello, Mr. Jardine. 
feste Ton und Form Oh, what the fuck? Both been very accommodating so far. <sighs> I don't know if I could leave that in, but Is I'm there going. Any chance we could leave it at eleven sessions. I'm I'm going to leave it in. Miss today's session. Another factor to do with the house. Oh. Um, so since the last session, I have actually had an offer for three hundred thousand pounds. You know we can't pay more than two hundred and fifty. Up, bro. Holy shit, it's like the longest skit in the history of this show. It's so fucked up. Does the sex have to be with us? Could we get someone else in? Sessions with her. We can't offer that. No. We'll go through another nine with that. Jesus. What's the catch? She's a bit uncomplicated. But she would be happy to go through with this. Well, it wouldn't. It might not matter. Lance is her legal guardian. with your sister who has a legal guardian would you knock another 10,000 pounds off for 25 sessions 25 sessions Linus. Say goodbye, Louise. Bye, bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Oh, Louise. Look what I found. I thought maybe she was going to be a minor, but that's somehow worse. to hand over the money in the till by threatening him with an axe. The only trouble was, yeah, I'm still trying to recover the day I went one. in with the axe, 
wasn't the same day as the day I made the threatening gestures. So even though I said I would chop him up, he found it pretty easy to ignore me. Must be about six months ago, I moved out of the house and started living outside. The idea came from a book I was reading, I think. Can't be uh, quite sure about that, but um, if you think about it, we don't really need central heating, big kitchens, rugs, huge beds. It's all nonsense. Well, we don't need them, but they're jolly nice. Well, they're useless, really. I can sleep anywhere I want now. I can sleep under a hedge or uh, in the tractor shed line. Just worry me when it's awfully cold. Cattle. Bedding down with the cattle, that uh, keeps you warm. At least then you get a little bit of heat. I do worry when I know Anthony's out in the open on a particularly bleak night. Rain. Sleet. There's quite a lot of food in the kitchen garden. Some stuff around the bins. Blackbird flew into the greenhouse the other day and uh, picked him off. He didn't taste too great, I must say. We're having lamb tonight. I sometimes have to fight the cats for food. Richard's bringing Helen for supper tonight. It's, uh, the dog's pretty loyal. Blocked off that draught in the drawing room. It's awfully snug now. I must admit, I do occasionally find myself staring in through the drawing room window rather wistfully, looking at the cosy scene there, and the big fire. Yes. And the family all together. You've got a pretty sorry sight out there, really. I sort of think all I'd have to do is walk in through the front door and I could have a nice hot bath and a big plate of eggs, and some tea. Mm. Why don't you come in tonight, darling? I can't really indulge that sort of thought. It's uh, dangerously persuasive. Just for an hour or so. I think that's the main problem, actually, is living with that contradiction. Uh, the only comfort is that I then suppose I'll have to live with it quite so long. Imagine being picked off by a sharp frost in the winter. I'm afraid that's probably true. I suppose if I did go inside, I uh, wouldn't have to live with it at all, really. Yeah. I never lock up at night, you know. This doesn't bear thinking about it. All right. You should lock up. You should, yeah, you should lock up, yeah. <laughs> you really should. Did you mention to Jill how much Ted liked his Lego? He's made a great spaceship. Yeah. She was worried it might be a bit old for him. Well, he's pretty bright for a seven-year-old. Hmm. Incidentally, did he come home from school today? Should have been home about six hours ago, shouldn't he? Yeah. Do you 
think we should call someone? Probably. Nah. Oh. He probably just decided to stay overnight at the school. Yeah. Hello? Hi, it's Sue Jails here. Just calling about Ted in Primary 3. Just wondered if he's been standing outside the school for a couple of weeks. Oh, right. She saw a bloke pick him up. Yeah. Oh, no. Did the man have a car? Yeah. Good, it was horribly rainy. Hello? Speaking. Oh, have you? Right. They found a body, love. Oh. Yeah. Um. They want us to go over and identify him. Well, couldn't they bring him round? Yeah, um, we're uh, just sort of um, doing something at the moment. Um, how about bunging him in a cab? Hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, um, is he wearing blue plastic-framed glasses? Make him look rather studious. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure that's him. That's good enough for us, yeah. Good God. Okay. Thanks a lot. Cheers. So, what's that, love? We've got to bury him ourselves. Did they say what had happened? Sounds like he was buggered quite a lot and then strangled. It's a bit much. Apparently, it was that bloody Mike Holland that did it. I'll have a word with him next time I see him. Tell him I'm pretty pissed off as well. Mike Holland. Well, I've always thought he was a bit of a twit. Mm. What the fuck, this one? Like, they mixed it up for that one, and instead of doing, like, a whole bunch of sketches, they did uh, some more long ones. And good God, just fuck. <laughs> like, that, especially the sketch, the, the first one was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever seen, the one with the acupuncture. The one with the terrible parents was really uncomfortable, too. But that sex arrangement skit was the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like, dear God. That, especially the reveal the sister was handicapped at the end. Like, fuck me, dude. That's the darkest shit I've ever seen in my life. Well, good God, man. That's, that's just that, man. Yeah, so we got one episode to go. See you later. <laughs> Bye. And I'm gone. See you later. I'm going to go. Um, What am I going to do? I'm going to watch Alan Partridge. I'll see you later. Bye.